it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. <laughs> well, I heard you around or about in the lecture music. See, there it is. <laughs> Violence at NBC, GE, com. I mean... Well, well Allison should know. What, what do you is say internet that anyway? With an email address, you can tap into 20 million other computers on a worldwide system called the internet. Internet is uh, that massive computer right. network, the one that's becoming really big now. You can get to South Africa or anywhere else by going through a series of menus or typing an address. You can send and receive mail to and from people all over the world. It's interesting because one would think if you're anonymous, you'd do anything you want. But people have a, in a group have their own sense of community and what we can do. Remember, not everything on the internet is picturesque or even pleasant. It came from California, maybe. Traveled by electronic mail. It spread across America. How insidious was this virus? Well, it was, it spread very quickly. What do you mean? That's, what, how does one, what, what do you write to it, like mail? The internet, uh, at first, when you look at it, and when you go through it, it can seem overwhelming and complex. But actually, as you take it one piece at a time, one bit at a time, and explore it and have fun, it gets to be easier and easier. The one thing that's missing, but that will soon be developed, is a reliable e-cash, a method whereby on the internet you can transfer funds from A to B without A knowing B or B knowing A. The way in which I can take a $20 bill and hand it over to you. Let's move on to Bitcoin, shall we? That's a, a virtual currency. Bitcoin. 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 People use it every single day to transfer money all over the world. It now allows us to receive payments from anywhere in the world instantaneously. Right, right? I mean, Bitcoin is completely uh, not understandable. It is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. It's impossible to be shut down. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's, there is no place, there is no Bitcoin place. You can't shoot Bitcoin. No one's in charge. Free totally market. Okay, Free so market. Of course, it has its negative side. It means that uh, the gangsters, the people who are engaged in illegal transactions will also have an easier way to carry on their business. Money laundering and for prostitution and for drug dealing using bitcoins, anonymous bitcoins. I think it's going to take a long time. I think it'll take a while, but um, I really think it will catch on. We, we hear you, Jeff. Uh, I'm just trying to get to grips with all this technology stuff. Just look at the venture capitalists that are already getting involved. Tim Draper, Mark Andreessen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to replace the national trade. Cryptographic currencies are going to be a mainstay of our financial future. They are going to be part of the future of this planet. It's it really, it it's, it's fascinating. This is the time where people should be trying really big, crazy things. Bitcoin is the internet of money, and currency is only the first application. What if there's a technological advancement so powerful that it transforms the very basic pillars of our society? A technology which fundamentally influences the way that our economy, governance systems and businesses function, and could change our conceptual understanding of trade, ownership and trust. This technology already exists, and it's called cryptocurrency. People often think of Bitcoin as only virtual money or a transaction system. But if you look closer, you'll see that the monetary aspect is just the tip of the iceberg. That's because Bitcoin is a groundbreaking internet technology for which money is merely one of the possible applications. Money exists to facilitate trade. Through the centuries, trade has become incredibly complex. Everyone trades with everyone, worldwide. Trade is recorded in bookkeeping, and this information is often isolated and closed to the public. For this reason, we use third parties and middlemen we trust to facilitate and approve our transactions. Think of governments, banks, accountants, notaries, and the paper money in your wallet. We call these trusted third parties. This brings us to the essence of Bitcoin. Bitcoin software enables a network of computers to maintain a collective bookkeeping via the internet. This bookkeeping is neither closed nor in control of one party. Rather, it is public and available in one digital ledger which is fully distributed across the network. We call this the blockchain. 
Like in the blockchain, all transactions are logged, including information on the time, date, participants, and amount of every single transaction. Each node in the network owns a full copy of the blockchain. On the basis of complicated, state-of-the-art mathematical principles, the transactions are verified by the so-called Bitcoin miners, who maintain the ledger. The mathematical principles also ensure that these nodes automatically and continuously agree about the current state of the ledger and every transaction in it. If anyone attempts to corrupt a transaction, the nodes will not arrive at a consensus, and hence will refuse to incorporate the transaction in the blockchain. So every transaction is public, and thousands of nodes unanimously agree that a transaction has occurred on date X at time Y. It's almost like there's a notary present at every transaction. This way, everyone has access to a shared single source of truth. This is why we can always trust the blockchain. The ledger doesn't care whether a Bitcoin represents a certain amount of euros or dollars, or anything else of value, or property for that matter. Users can decide for themselves what a unit of Bitcoin represents. A Bitcoin is divisible in a hundred million units, and each unit is both individually identifiable and programmable. This means that users can assign properties to each unit. Users can program a unit to represent a euro cent, or a share in a company, a kilowatt hour of energy, or a digital certificate of ownership. Because of this, Bitcoin is much more than simply money and payments. A Bitcoin can represent many kinds of property, a thousand barrels of oil, award credits, or a vote during elections, for example. Moreover, Bitcoin allows us to make our currency smarter and to automize our cash and money flows. Imagine a healthcare allowance in dollars or euros that can only be used to pay for healthcare at certified parties. In this case, whether someone actually follows the rules is no longer verified in the bureaucratic process afterwards. You simply program these rules into the money. Ergo, compliancy up front. The unit can even be programmed in such a way that it will automatically return to the provider if the receiver doesn't use it after a certain amount of time. This way, the provider can ensure that allowances are not hoarded. A company can control its spending in the same way by programming budgets for salaries, machinery, materials, and maintenance so that the respective money is specified and cannot be spent on other things. Automizing such matters leads to a considerable decrease in bureaucracy, which saves accountants, controllers, and the organization in general an incredible amount of time. The programmable open character of Bitcoin allows us to completely rebuild and innovate our financial sector and our administrative processes, make them more efficient and transparent, and significantly decrease bureaucracy. But there's more. In an Internet of Things, our economy will be dealing with machines that actively participate in the economic traffic. In fact, they're already here. Think of a vending machine, or drones delivering packages. These machines are unfamiliar with the concept of trust, but Bitcoin is not. Because of Bitcoin, the drone can be 100% certain that it will deliver the package to the right recipient and know for sure that it's been paid for. And we can program the vending machine in such a way that it will automatically keep track of its supplies, order new supplies from the supplier, and pay for them automatically. Of course, you'll understand that this is only the beginning. Internet technology is disruptive and breaks the status quo. It opens markets and breaks the positions of middlemen all the time. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have caused a paradigm shift. It's time to explore this new technology constructively and critically and openly discuss potential applications.